I now have the pleasure of introducing another highly respected College of DuPage professor with a career spanning from 1982 to her retirement in 2005. Alice Snellgrove made significant contributions to the college, notably in her leadership and expansion of the honors program. What a great pleasure and honor it is to introduce a man whose time at COD was marked by outstanding achievements and the admiration of all who knew him, Rob Janish. I first met Rob in the summer of 1996 when he entered COD in the Honors Scholar Program. Although a first-generation college student, Rob had an amazingly clear vision for his future, telling me then that he hoped to transfer to Duke University and major in a field that would ultimately prepare him for graduate school. I was impressed. I grew increasingly impressed as I watched Rob move forward, as he poured his energy into absorbing every experience, academic and personal, to grow and to develop his best self. He was an outstanding student and an expert at time management, a skill all too rare in college students. At COD, he completed almost triple the number of required honors courses, earning A's in all of them. Rob, of course, finished the Honors Scholar Program with flying colors and racked up other significant academic honors. He was a member of Phi Theta Kappa and Sigma Delta Mu, a recipient of the Carter Carroll Excellence in History Award, and one of the college's two nominees for Academic All-USA. In 1999, he graduated with three degrees and was named the college's outstanding male graduate. Rob's COD activities were not limited to academics. In fact, he loved sports and was the goalie for the college's nationally ranked soccer team. In addition, he demonstrated a deep commitment to serving others. This he did as a student ambassador, a member of the Honors Student Advisory Council, a frequent speaker at Honors Program events, and is a highly valued student worker in the COD tutoring service. Fulfilling his long-term dream, Rob transferred to Duke University, one of very few transfer students accepted worldwide, graduating with a bachelor's degree in economics and philosophy. Rob then began work at a prestigious Chicago law firm and later entered the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, earning a master's degree in finance. Currently, he serves as a senior paralegal at Kirkland and Ellis LLP in Chicago, where he works with private equity, mergers, and acquisitions. Rob continues to serve others through tutoring and mentoring young men, volunteering in legal clinics, and recently at College of DuPage, he endowed the Shirley M. Janish Memorial Scholarship in honor of his late mother, who long championed his success. Like his mother and so many others, I'm very proud of him. Rob Janish. Wow, I wasn't uh, expecting that introduction. Uh, I would uh, I'd first like to thank my uh, distinguished alumni, um, Nairis, Jacqueline, Rowan, and Josie. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure getting to know you today and uh, it's an honor to share this stage with such a unique and, and talented group of alums. Um, over the years, during the course of conversations that I've had with many different people, I've been asked, how exactly is it that you transferred from a community college to Duke University? Uh, my response to them is always either, you know, how much time do you have? Or uh, have you ever seen the movie Rudy? Because uh, aside from me walking onto Duke's basketball team and, and playing for Coach K, uh, it's kind of like that. 
Um, long history of interest in the school, its athletic programs. Slipped through the cracks in high school. Uh, first person in my family to attend college, and I uh, had a lot of help along the way. I've always hesitated to tell the story, uh, even to my very close friends at Duke. Uh, in the interest of time and because without the presence of so many of the people that helped me, I was always afraid it would seem like uh, an exaggerated tale of self-glorification. However, after discussions uh, with those same Duke friends who are now accomplished pediatric cardiologists, biomechanical engineers, ER pediatricians, and computational chemists, just to name a few, uh, I've decided to share it with you all today because I feel it's the best way to honor so many of the teachers, coaches, professors, uh, family, and friends who helped make my dream of attending Duke uh, a reality nearly 25 years ago. Uh, you know, being here brings back a lot of memories. So, um, my COD story starts back in the fall of 1995. I was the starting goalkeeper for Glenbard North soccer team, and after the team advanced to the super sectionals the year before, our senior laden squad had lofty ambitions of going downstate. Uh, that is, until we ran into the number one team in the state, St. Charles, and uh, they blew us out in the sectional in early November. Uh, a couple days later, I remember going into my high school counselor's office after being asked by some of my AP class friends where I was applying to college. I sat down, told her my name, and she asked, where do you want to go? I said, I've always been interested in Duke. Uh, they were located in beautiful North Carolina, had a great academic reputation and basketball program. Their campus was filled with Gothic architecture and their school colors were even my favorite shade of royal blue. She chuckled though, uh, wheeled around to her computer and pulled up my transcripts. Uh, she stared at the screen for a second and went, oh, where have you been? Uh, to which I replied, you know, I've been here for three and a half years. Our soccer team just got knocked out in the playoffs and you know, my friends were applying to schools like Northwestern, uh, University of Chicago and U of I, and they said I should come and talk to you. So she told me that she was very sorry, but I had missed the application deadline to apply to Duke. Uh, but there were several other schools I could and, and should apply to. Uh, we settled on Wheaton College and the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and I dutifully took the applications home to fill them out. Upon showing them to my mom, however, she was less than pleased because she and my dad didn't have any money at the time save for me to attend college. And even though U of I was only $11,000 a year back then, uh, quite the bargain today, um, and 8,000 due to my Illinois State Scholar status, the thought of taking out student loans or applying for something we could not immediately pay for frightened her a great deal. Despite my pleading and sharing that my counselor thought I had a great chance of getting into both Wheaton and Illinois, uh, my mom refused to sign the $25 U of I application check. Uh, I was both simultaneously heartbroken and, and angry. And uh, I went upstairs to my room and uh, poured out my thoughts on a sheet of notebook paper in the form of a short poem that included Northwestern and Duke. Uh, I then decided to leave the house and go for a run to air my frustrations. However, I, I didn't realize how amped up and angry I was until I, uh, I started running and sort of like Forrest Gump, I, I kind of just kept going until I'd run clear across town from Glendale Heights to Carroll Stream. Uh, I ended up at the front door of my freshman sophomore basketball coach and FCA leader's house, uh, John Chamberlain. Uh, he and his wife, Laren, could see I was, uh, I was not in a good way, and uh, they invited me in. They gave me some water, uh, listened, and uh, prayed with me. And after talking me down for a couple of hours, uh, John dropped me back off at home where I think my mom and dad were happy to see me after I left the house on its foot and didn't tell them at all where I was going. Um, Coach Chamberlain has continued to be a tremendous supporter of mine over the years, and I'm really thankful that he uh, could be with us here today. Uh, that U of I check did end up getting signed, um, thanks to my dad and, and Aunt Reeve for that one. Uh, and I was fortunate to get in both to Wheaton and U of I, but my family still didn't really have the money for it. And I knew if I went to either school, I'd settle in, make friends, and, and I'd be giving up on my dream of attending Duke. So uh, my counselor suggested I look into College of DuPage and its honors program. Uh, after working all summer and buying a car in late July, I drove over to campus for an honors orientation meeting, not really sure of what to expect. I made my way up to the third floor of the IC building on a hot summer morning and settled into a classroom with a bunch of other high school students when a tall woman with a warm southern accent entered the room. Uh, she smiled and introduced herself as Al Snowgrove 
the Honors Program Coordinator at College of DuPage and began to share with us the benefits of the COD Honors Program. She spoke about the Honors Scholar Retreat, the enriched nature of the courses, and the Honors faculty who actually applied to teach them. What it meant to be an Honors Scholar graduate, as well as the achievements that many Honors Scholars in recent years had won, like the Cardinal Carroll Excellence in History Award, Academic All-American Team, College of DuPage's Outstanding Male and Female Graduate Awards. She also mentioned that honor students in recent years had transferred to schools like Northwestern, the University of Chicago, Georgetown, and the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I began writing the awards and opportunities she spoke of on the back of the carbon copy honors program application in list form. I then tore off the program copy and walked up to Alice to turn it in. I introduced myself and said, my name is Rob Janish and I want to transfer to Duke University. She looked me up and down and kindly accepted my application, but she had an okay, we'll see kind of look on her face as she did so. Uh, looking back, it reminds me of a scene in the movie Rudy where he's asked why he wants to attend Notre Dame. And he says, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to go to school here. And ever since I was a kid, everyone said it, it couldn't be done. My whole life, people have been telling me what I could and couldn't do. I've always listened to them, believed in what they said. I don't want to do that anymore. I would come to realize years later that that was the moment that my journey to Duke truly started. I also vividly remember the day my application to Duke was due. I had decided to stay a third year at COD because I had, not, I had joined the college's nationally ranked soccer team until my sophomore year. We went to nationals and finished fourth and had almost all of our players coming back and we were preseason number one in the country and not because of me. And I thought we had a great chance of winning it all. Uh, I had won the Carl Carroll Excellence in History Award, accumulated enough credits to graduate, and was named to the Academic All-American team, but I was still very insecure beneath the surface about my application to Duke that fall. I was petrified that I had not done enough, that I would not stack up with their competitive transfers from all over the country and overseas, and no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't cut my essays down to the required number of words Duke was asking for. So on the day my application was due, and it was mailed back in those days, I had planned to meet with Alice to go over my final application packet. She had helped me to create a beautiful laminate white folder with a blue ribbon tied through it, and inside I had included the poem I wrote the night my mom wouldn't sign my application check to U of I, the carbon copy honors program application with a list of honors on the back, with every item checked off except the last one, which read, transfer to Duke University. I went to Alice's office and I asked her to review my three application essays. Uh, she read them and liked their content, but immediately noticed uh, they were a bit long. Upon noticing that each one was about twice as long as it needed to be, she asked me when the application was due. When I told her today, she scolded me kindly, as she, 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 much, she always did, and told me that I needed to cut them down to Duke's word limit requirements and urged me to trust that all the work I'd put in was enough. As it was already early afternoon, she took out a red pen and she marked up all three of my essays like wildfire. She then got up, left me the keys to her office and said she had to go to a meeting, but that I should revise the essays on her computer, print them out, lock up afterwards and hightail it over to the post office before it closed, as Duke may not be as forgiving as her if my application was postmarked even one day late. I heeded her words and finished typing up my essays at a quarter to five. As most post, post offices closed at 5 p.m. sharp, I went over to the regional post office in Carroll Stream, which just happened to be on my way home as it closed at 6 p.m. I got there at 5.45, mailed in the application, went home and crashed, completely exhausted. Fast forward roughly three months later to the day I'll remember most about my time at College of DuPage, May 14th, 1999. It was a Friday morning, and I'd sent in my application to Duke several months earlier. I had no classes on Fridays and was scheduled to attend a student ambassador meeting with fellow volunteers run by admissions coordinator Chris Lesnar, and she always had snacks for us after the meetings. Before I left my house, I checked the mailbox, but as it was before 10 a.m., the mail hadn't arrived yet. After finishing the meeting, which had gotten moved from its original location due to a classroom conflict, I was standing around talking to some fellow student ambassadors when Alice burst into the room. 
she immediately ran over to me, embraced me, and said, you're in. I was a bit startled and uh, looked at her and said, what, what do you mean? How do you know? And she said that, uh, she went on to explain that my acceptance package to Duke had arrived via FedEx after I left the house that morning. My mom had called her to tell her the news and as she had no way of getting a hold of me because the meeting had been moved and nobody at admissions knew where I was, uh, she told Alice that she wanted her to find me so she could tell me the news. For the next two hours, Alice paraded me around the halls of the college in a victory tour of sorts, <laughs> stopping at the offices of all my professors, Dr. Murphy, all the people who had made my Duke dream their own. I then went to Kinko's, where I had 100 copies of the admissions letter made in Duke Blue, and I delivered copies of it to my dad at his work at Heritage Cadillac in Lombard, to my Aunt Reed at home in Glen Ellen. Adding to the memories of the day was the coincidence that that night was the college's celebration of academic excellence. As I was brought up on stage with the college's other honor scholars that evening, I remember President Michael Murphy, who was a tremendous advocate of mine and the honors program, uh, announcing to the crowd that I had been admitted to Duke in the back of the auditorium, I could see my mom and my dad, who had rushed home from work to make sure they could attend. Alice recently told me via email that she will never, ever forget that incredible day, and I certainly share her feelings on that. Uh, in closing, I just want to thank uh, President Caputo, uh, Vice President Johnson, and the Selection Committee for this wonderful honor, and uh, I hope my fellow distinguished alums uh, won't feel slighted. Uh, when I say I hope the best is yet to come for me and my family as we award the first ever Shirley M. Janish Memorial Scholarship to a COD honor student this fall in honor of my late mother, uh, who we lost unexpectedly late last year. Uh, I'd like to leave you all with just these two words that Alice closed every email and letter I've ever received from her with. Many thanks. Many thanks. Many thanks.